What's up everybody, Nadia and Sans here for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. I feel like more often than not, I'm always getting questions about how to do screen pumps. Basically just making video or images or text bump to the beat of the music. So today we're putting that question to rest and you're gonna know how to do it. I'm sick of hearing it. I don't wanna- One more person asked me how to do screen pumps. It's a lot easier than you think. But you gotta put in a little bit of work, a little bit of creativity, pay attention to the details, listen to the music. But right now, open up Adobe Premiere CC 2017 or whatever version you're using because this pretty much works in every version because we're getting started. All right guys, on my timeline right now, I have a picture of a speaker that we're gonna make bump to the beat of this music. Just like a hip hop track down here. Pretty simple. Uh, if your audio layer is really small, I recommend pulling it down so you can actually see the transients in the waveform. Now I'm using something that's very drum driven so you can actually see the transients. Yours might be a little more difficult if you're using like an EDM or dubstep song or whatever. You might not be able to see those finite details. So in that case, you'll have to really listen. But in this case, you can look with your eyes. So I know that all these big transients down here are the kick drums. So basically what I'm gonna do is come into my speaker layer and the rule of thumb that I like to do for kick drums, at least, uh, is a two frame delay between the animations. So I'm gonna set a keyframe up here for scale. I'm gonna go over two frames, set another keyframe, and then go over two more frames and set another keyframe. And now if I zoom in here, the start and the end points are gonna be your resting position, which in this case is 100% scale. And then I just want the middle to scale up to give it that form of actually pumping. So now if we play that, just that one animation back, and I know that another kick is here. So what I'll do is I'll just line up the mouse just slightly before the kick. And I'm going to copy these keyframes and I'm going to paste them. Same thing here, paste. There's another kick. Again, we'll paste. There you go, paste. And we'll cut the song there so this video isn't super long. Now, that literally took no time at all and check it out. too hard, but we're gonna make it look even better by adding some motion blur. Woo. Come over here to your effects, type in blur, and we're gonna drop down a, uh, let's say, Gaussian blur right on that guy, right on the speaker. And this makes it very easy because you're gonna actually see where all the keyframes are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing down here on blurriness. I'm gonna set a keyframe at zero, go two over, set a keyframe, go two over, set a keyframe, and I want my outsides to be zero, and my middle, when it actually pumps, we're gonna blur it, uh, let's say 15%. That seems good. And then what I'll do is I'll copy these keyframes. And now I'm just gonna follow along and an easy way to do this is clicking this little arrow right here, go to next keyframe. If I just click that to go to the next one, I can just paste down here and it will paste exactly in place of my scale animations over here. So I'm gonna do that a couple times, paste the blur. There you go. So now when my speaker pumps, it actually blurs when it gets closer to the camera, emulating focal distance. Scientific stuff here. Check it out. Nice. But we can't just stop there, right? We can't just stop there. We've got to add another sick graphic on top. Sick. And we're going to do it on the snares this time. So here's the snare. Right before the snare, we're going to come into our sick layer. Same thing. Scale. One, two. Set a keyframe, one, two, set a keyframe, go to the middle, and now we're gonna make this sick. Grab the keyframes, go to our next snare, which is right about there. Paste, paste, paste. Same thing with the blur. Set a keyframe, one, two, set a keyframe, one, two, set a keyframe, go back to blur it, copy it. We use this as our guide. And wouldn't you know, we've just created a sick graphic. The same concept applies to video. Use it on video, use it on text, use it on graphics, use it on logos, use it on whatever you want. Now you know how to do it, go out and use it. <gasps> Use the knowledge that you learned in today's video to do your own cool thing and don't just copy me. You start getting really interesting results when you have multiple layers going in it. Now this works on single layers very easily, but if you have a layer that's like two or three layers deep, you can start doing individual things on each layer, one for the kick, one for the snare, and one for like some other sound that happens to be in the song. And you don't have to do two keyframes. You can actually extend it out and do something even cooler. Like if we go back in right here and we adjust the snare animation, let's say it hits it two and then goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do eight. And then what I'll do is I will copy these keyframes and I will just paste over where our other ones were. 
just like so. Same thing down here with our blur. And now check this out. The sick is actually lagging because we're using eight keyframes instead of two. Play around with the format, make it your own, do something cool. But now you know how to do it, and I was the one to teach you. Yes. So stop asking me about the screen pumps. But if you do have any other questions, make sure to hit me up on social media, on Twitter and Instagram at Naughty and Sands. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure did. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. If you're new here and you were like, how do I do screen pumps and you happen to find this video, I have more videos. Subscribe so you don't miss any and watch the other ones. I'll see you next time.